Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we'll be solving another Physics 7C practice problem about incident light called a triangular prism. Remember, if you find this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel and leave a like. Your support is very much appreciated and we really want your feedback. Okay, so here's the problem. Feel free to pause the video to copy the problem so that it's easy for you to follow along. Um, this one is just a picture for the most part, so it's not too much to copy. Here is the question statement. A piece of glass with index of refraction 1.5 in the shape of an equilateral triangle, triangular prism has a ray of 650 nanometer red light incident upon it, as shown in the picture below. So what we want to do is draw on the picture above, or the triangular picture next to us, and say what happens to the incident ray once it enters the prism, and then explain why it is the ray must follow the path that you drew. For the purpose of this problem, you may assume that unless the ray is totally internally reflected, all the energy of the incident ray goes into the refracted ray. Okay, so let's take a look at this picture here. Um, the major thing to note is that when light is incident upon a surface, we're always looking at what is parallel to the direction our incident light is coming from, or um, a better way to say this is what's perpendicular to our surface. So we're always looking at the perpendicular component of our surface. So this line is perpendicular to the surface here because it's 90 degrees on both sides. Okay, so we're always dealing with the angle so if I come in from this way, the angle is always the difference between this perpendicular and where the light is coming from. So that would be our theta here. So here, our theta is the dis difference between how the light is coming in and what's perpendicular to the surface. So here our angle would be zero degrees. And it's zero degrees once again, because it's not the angle from the surface to the light ray. It's the angle from the perpendicular or the normal to the surface to the light ray. So normal to the surface is aligned straight down and straight up. And our light ray is coming straight up. So if we look at Snell's law, which says that N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. If we look at this... Our N1 is air, is air, and that just equals 1. Our N2 is the glass, N2 is the glass, and that equals 1.5. Our sine theta 1, our theta 1, which is the angle that is coming from the incident light ray, theta 1 equals 0 degrees. So what we need to do is what is theta 2? Well, our theta 1 is 0 degrees, and sine of 0 is just 0. So it doesn't matter what we do to multiply and divide by 0. We need theta 2 to equal 0 as well. And so theta 2 equals 0 degrees as well. And for that to be the case, we need our angle to be directly along the normal of the surface. So since it's 0 degrees, the light will go straight through and come up here and deflect off the surface. So that's part one, that's the first boundary. It just goes straight through. Okay, next thing we need to do is how does it bounce off of this surface? Well, we wanna note, first of all, the angles in our triangle. Since this is an equilateral triangle, all of our angles inside the triangle are 60 degrees. Okay, the next thing we wanna note is that we want the normal of the surface here. The angle we're looking for is the angle from the incident to the normal. So this is our theta we want, which I will call theta three. Okay, so let's see if we can find what that angle is. Well, we can find this angle here, which I will call phi. Phi is just gonna be 90 plus 60, which is 150. So to get this angle, our triangle should have 180 degrees minus 150. So our phi equals 30 degrees, which is right there. Then we know since this is normal to the surface, this should be 90 degrees, and so should this total angle here. So if this is 30, theta 3 
has to be 60 degrees to add up to 90. Okay? So we're going to use Snell's Law again. This equation right here. We're going to use Snell's Law again for theta 3. So we're trying to figure out if it is totally internally reflected or if it goes through. And if it goes through, um, what's the angle it goes through at? So N1 sine, well I'll call it N3 sine theta 3 equals N4 sine theta 4. So here N3 is our glass. So this is N glass. Okay. And that equals 1.3. Sine theta 3 is sine of 60 degrees. N4 is air, and that is 1, and then we're looking for theta 4. So if I plug this in, I get 1.3 divided by 1 times sine of 60 degrees equals sine of theta 4. Okay? So the issue here is if we plug in everything we need here, what we get is sine of theta 4 equals 1.3. So our big issue here is this 1.3. Remember, we can't, we can't take a sine or inverse sine of anything greater than 1. That is not possible. So here we'd have to take an inverse sine of 1.3, which is greater than 1. So that's not possible. We always need to have something that's one or less because the range of our sine function is from zero to one or negative one to one. So if that's impossible, that means we actually don't, we can't use Snell's law, which means our light is just reflected off. And we know the fact that N1, I'm sorry, theta 1 equals theta 2 for total internal reflection. So if we have total internal reflection, which is what this causes, if theta 3 is 60 degrees, this angle here must be 60 degrees as well. So recap, we found this was 60 degrees because we know that this equilateral triangle has an angle of 60 degrees here. This is normal to the surface, so it's 90 degrees. So we solved for phi, which is 30 degrees. Then we know that this has to be normal to the surface because that's what we want to find is light incident compared to the normal of the surface. And then we said that since that's normal, this whole angle must be 90 degrees. Thus phi being 30, theta three must be 60. Then we plugged in 60 degrees into Snell's Law and showed that this equation is not possible to solve. And so it must be in total internal reflection. And so with total internal reflection, theta 1 equals theta 2, or the incident angle has to equal the reflected angle. And so our reflected angle is 60 degrees. Okay. Last piece is what happens here. Okay, well, let's see if we can find any of these angles. Once again, we know that this angle here has to be 90 degrees because it's normal to the surface. If this is 60, this has to be 30 degrees. If this is 30 and that's 60, this must be 90. If that's 90, this must be 90. Once again, this forms a triangle. It should add up to 180. And we know that since this pink line here is normal to the surface, it's perpendicular to the surface, and we already have 60 degrees, we know we must have 30 degrees here to make 90. So 30 plus 60 plus 90 gives us 180 degree triangle. If this is 90 degrees, we can do the exact same setup as we did for when the light was incident on the first surface, or the first boundary. And we know the light must go completely through because it needs to stay at 90 degrees. So our light ends up coming at 90 degrees at this side. So using Snell's law and the fact that we can see that anything that's total, totally internally reflected 
we have theta incident equals theta outgoing. We found that the light ray incident perpendicular to the bottom surface will go straight up, bounce off at 60 degrees from the normal of the surface on the left surface till it goes directly through the right surface at 90 degrees. So this was kind of a more difficult problem. We had to know, we had to use our triangles and we had to use Snell's law. And we had to have an understanding of what happens when our theta equals zero, which means we need to know that we're always working at the angle from the direction away from the normal to the surface. Not from the surface to the light ray, but from normal of the surface to the light ray. We also needed to realize that we can't have anything where sine of theta is greater than one because it's not possible for sine of theta to be greater than one. So if that's the case, we use total internal reflection. So this was a bit more difficult of a problem, but hopefully this was helpful. Um, if it was helpful, please leave a like and make sure you subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments or concerns, please leave the feedback in the comments section and I will do my best to get back to you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone.